Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a beautiful, beautiful Thursday in winter here in Brisbane. I hope you're all doing well. I think restrictions are starting to be lifted, so hopefully soon we get a bit more travel and adventures in, which will be nice. Today I'm going to do an unboxing for the first time ever. So I've got here a loom. That's an Ashford rigid heddle loom from Petlands. It's an Australian website based in New South Wales, I think. I'd have to double check that though. I'll put a link down, don't worry. And yeah, this came about a week ago and with all the rush of, you know, the end of June, I've been waiting to undo it and actually assemble it. So let's do it together. I figured that would be a nice change. So we'll see if we can get through the packaging first. So yeah. Yeah, it's not too bad. I got me finger. Yeah, I've been wanting one of these for a while. I've got a big uh, four shaft loom again, Ashford, in the corner over there behind the camera. But I've been wanting a little rigid heddle because I don't, I don't really know how to weave yet. So I thought I'll get a little one and start, and that would be a good, a good thing to be doing. There we go. I was one of those kids who didn't really open things carefully. So I was just like, yes, let's just rip the wrapping paper. <laughs> there we go. So. Oh, there's more layers. Okay, cool. 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 Uh, let's bring this around. Okay, but we've got more in here. What have we got? Oh, that's exciting. Okay. Right, so that's empty. Recycle you later. And then we have it. Sample it loom. And it's a 25 centimeter wide one, which actually it says on there. There you are. Hope you can all read that. But yeah, it looks very exciting, doesn't it? So open it. We've got, oh yeah, that's a Petlands thing, okay. Cool, cool, thank you. Do I have any problems down here for me? And I, this comes with one of the rigid heddles, which is one of these comb-like objects, which is good. And the one it comes with is a, I believe it's a 7.5, which can do like your 8-ply or your DK weight yarns, so that's very good to know because I'm a knitter, so I only work with that rather than the weaving terminology at the point where you get your yarns and it says, you know, so many wraps per inch, etc. Blah, blah, blah. So it's good to know that I got a slightly heavier one, which I think was the five that does heavier wools than an eight ply. And then I got one for four ply. So that will be very useful. And I want to get one of them actually. If I have the table room, I'd like to get some of the bigger ones, like the 80 centimeter one, or maybe even the 120 centimeter loom. If if I like this one, we'll see how we go. See if I'm any good at this. <laughs> but I think that could be fun. Okay. Right, I'm hearing suspicious rumblings. How do we do this? Do we pry you up? Do you? Do you come out? Aha! There we are. We got there eventually. Yeah, just don't don't copy my scissor technique. It's because it's just for the best. Ah, here we go. All right, so it opens neatly. So I got it here. There we go. We'll put you guys to the side. Ah, there we are. Very nice. Okay. So. Let's see, we've got a booklet on Ashford and what they do. Oh, that's shiny. And they've got all this stuff and what they do and how to buy it. And ooh, the hose. Well, that's exciting. Yes, there goes my money down the drain. <laughs> I'll be buying too much. Let's say, all right, learn to weave on the sample at loom. Excellent. Good, good, good. That's what I want. Because it comes, um, as you can see, unassembled, so I need to put it together. 
and there is a wax you can buy to coat the pieces so that they last for a very long time but I didn't see that in time and didn't add it to my basket so it's like well okay we'll just do it all right I think these are the shuttles so I think we'll just put you up here for now got one piece of wood okay yeah, two pieces of wood. Okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. No idea what I'm doing, but okay. Whatever you are. All right. We'll figure you out. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> and then we got some cardboard. And then we got more pieces. Ah, there's the other heddle. The 7.5, I believe. There we are. How wonderful. All right, we'll put you over there with your brethren. Just to be careful about it. We got some rubbish. What else we've got in here? We've got at least a dowel. Okay. Now we got two pieces. This clearly forms the body of the loom. That's that's very obvious, you know. But um, we've got to put it together. There's whatever the heck this is. Ashford. Okay. Well, obviously it's Ashford. We've got some sandpaper. Okay. And then we've got some more dowelish objects. Alright. How about we put you back in there for now? We'll just contemplate what we're doing. <laughs> Alright, learn to weave. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, it's got a simple. Yeah. They do recommend that the surfaces be waxed or sealed before assembly. Mm hmm Am I going to do this? No. Can't be bothered. I would for a bigger one, but for this one, if I, if I don't like it or I don't find that weaving's my jam, I mean, who cares? I can always disassemble it and then, you know, wax it, etc. So, which is probably something I'll do in the future, but I do want to get this together. Okay, we got a lot. Right, so this weird doobie wacky threading hook. Good to know. Okay. That's for much later, I gather. We've got some clamps. Apparently, we've got a warping peg. We've got the shuttles. I recognize the shuttles. We're all good there. There's a front roller. There's a warp stick. Front rail. Front rail. So that's the front rail. Okay. Right side, loom side. Left side, loom side. Okay. Then there's handles and cogs and poles. What the heck is a pole? Wood screws? Metal screws? Washers? Oh, ye gods. I need tools for this. Uh, okay. Nice bit of a woodworking early on a Thursday. Alright, we need round head screws. Okay. Alright, so I need a screwdriver. Ah, no, no, come back, come back. Eagles. Wish this was like IKEA, you could pay someone to put it together for you. Okay, I think I need to go get a screwdriver, so I might pause this and we'll come back to it in a second. Okay, we're back, we're back. I raided Dad's collection, I got some screwdrivers. Okay, let's see if they do the thing. Alright, I'm um, on the instructions. This might be a very long video by the looks of things. Right, heddles. I'm just going to get you to scooch, okay? Thank you. Oh, jeez. Okay. Pardon me. Oh, it's winter here. Everyone's got a cold. <sighs> right, step one. All right, we need the right side of the loom. So one gathers. Yep, that's left. That's right. Okay, cool. The right side of the loom with the brand. We've got to remove these doobie wackies. They're just there for protection. 
The move do be wackies. Okay, step one. Put the pole in place. And then you turn it over and you attach them with the... With the round head screw. Okay, okay, okay. Right, we'll go back to here. Because we've got to get the poles, which are these things here. So they're pretty distinctive. Uh -huh, I found one pole. And then I found another pole. Are they only put in on the right hand side? Okay, alright. How do we put them in? Alright, so do you have a specific side? Or it's that side because. But no, no, we've got to put it on. Wait on. Alright, so we got it like the painting. Oh, sorry, the picture. What am I saying? Ugh. Now, do we put in one pole or two poles? I think it's just one pole. Okay. Right. So we fit you neatly like that. There we go. There you go. Whoop. So you resemble. And then we turn it over. I don't understand. Attach both poles with a 20 centimeter round head screw. Hmm? Oh no, I got it wrong. Aha, uh -huh, the. Yeah, there we go. That's how it is supposed to go. Okay, I got it wrong. I thought the hole fitted over the little clicker pin doobie thing, but no, no, no. I've got to look at the picture better. Okay, so. Is that correct? Okay. And then, holding it, we turn it over. Wait, we should probably find the screws. Okay, so now as to what screws we need. It doesn't specify. Yeah, screws. Okay. No, oh, we need the trusty scissors. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay, okay, okay. Well, that's where the clamps went. Cool, cool. We got the clamps. We're all good there. Now, oh god, oh god. I just thought it say. No, 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 Dow. Bad Dow. That's in its proper place, but. But then we got to turn it over and screw it into place with a screw. Now, a round head screw. Okay, well, I got a. Metal thread screws. Round head screws. No, no, no. There are two round head screws. We're good. We've just got to find them from the picture. Because there's two lots of different screws there's metal thread screws, and then there's round head screws. So. Oh, nearly wash, lost the washer. <laughs> I don't do carpentry for a reason, people. <sighs> okay, these ones have the bigger heads, so it's these two. Okay. Right, I think. Also, these ones are shorter. Yeah, 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 yeah. these are the right ones. Okay, so. Hmm, ha, hmm. Right, so we're assuming we put both poles on each side, so... I think. I'm doing this the right way. I don't know. Let's see, make it resemble a picture more. There we go, so it's just a little bit clicky-boo. Look, we'll put in the first one. Oh no, it does have the other thingy, so we should put the other pole on there. All right, we're gonna put that into there, and then we're gonna find any screwdriver that freaking works. Let's put this in. Kenna, Kenna. All right, as Brad from One Out of Teeth likes to say, "Ratty tidy, lefty loosey." 
Okay. Doing this very badly. Can I? Can I? Just work with me here. Hmm. And they're saying it shouldn't be too tight. It should be able to move freely. Okay, leave a bit of room under the screw bit. Let's see. Yeah, how's that? Yeah. That looks good. See, we leave a... I don't know if you probably can't see it, but we're leaving a bit of room under the head of the screw so it can move freely. Well, that seems pretty free because it's still got the metal tappy boo kind of inhibiting it a little. But that seems free moving, yeah? I think it seems free moving. Okay, and I assume we do the same for this one. I don't think they really have a picture of this one though. Do they? I'm not sure. The poles should move freely. Yes, but do I put... Is it both poles on each on one side? Let's have a look ahead. It's not really saying. Okay, okay, okay. So we'll go back. Okay, got no clue. Let's look at the front. Maybe the front tells me something. Okay, see, there's one pole on the front. Okay, cool. And that's on the outside, as it should be. Did I put it on right? Yeah, yeah, put it on right. We're fine. That's clearly one of the cogs. That's fine. But it's just like, do you put the other pole on the other side? It's not being very specific. Okay. On the right side of the loom. Because it only mentions put the pole in place. But then it says, turn it over and attach both poles with the round head screw. One presumes that we're putting both poles on each on the one side, because in the diagram it only has the poles on the right hand side. So I'm not very sure. Is this the back of the unit? Is it the front of the unit? Okay, so do do do. do. Uh huh. All right. I think I found a picture, because that's the back of the loom, right? That seems to be the bulky booby bit. So, why don't I say booby bit? Ignore me. But I think that is the, the, the like the more front side of the right side, right? So that's the back of the loom and it's the front, so... I presume that we put the other pole like that on the right-hand side. I think. Let's have a look at the front again. Oh, it does! See? See? I can see a bit of the pole. There we go. Okay. okay. So, but what do we do with the left hand side? Like, there aren't any more poles. Maybe something else goes on on that side. Okay. Right. Existential crisis over. Let's see if we can get this in. Okay. There we go. Unlike this side, where in the little metal pin sort of goes to that side, this is this is clicking in on the other side, so that's good to know. Now we need our other round head screw, we got it. <sighs> Grab the screwdriver again. Oh my god, I need a cup of tea for this. Yeah, I don't do well with putting things together. I tried to build some hangers for clothes a few years back. It <sighs> Look, they got done in the end, but I mean... If I'd been working with my significant other on that project, we probably would have filed for some sort of divorce. Building things does not make people happy except maybe the professionals. Maybe because we don't understand it fully. Like, um, there's a lot of knowledge we're all learning today, I think. Mostly, don't trust Brittany with tools, but... Okay, well now we're leaving enough space again. You can probably tighten that one a little bit more. Hopefully that's good enough. Because it says 0.5 of a millimeter. I think we can stand to tighten that a little more. There we go. Okay, see, see, see. We get a little movement. 
Look at that. Okay, okay. We did the first step. We did the first two pitches. Woo! Okay, let's move on to the bottom left. So, it says secure the back rail to the right side with two wood screws. So that's the darker ones. We'll put the little metal screws there. I'm assuming these are the wood screws. Yep, yeah, because it says it. We should have eight of them, which we do. Cool, 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 cool. Got to find the background. No, the clamp hole is towards the bottom. Is is that important? Are we are we screwing through the clamp hole? Oh god, this sounds good. Right now, I uh, eat at uh, 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 uh. This is the front rail. Back rail has one hole in it. Oh, there we go. The clamp hole is to oh, the clamp hole is towards the bottom. I think they mean this because I'm very confused. Like there, there, there are obviously multiple holes here, and it's like okay. Um, <laughs> now we need to secure that with two two wood screws. So we are putting on the right side. We're fastening the back rail clamp hole down into those two. One gathers. Okay. Now we're putting the screws in on the right side, aren't we? Okay. I need more people for this. Oh, cool. Okay, now, now, see, we'll just put the screws in first, and then we'll see if we can line it up. Okay, we got the clamp hole on the bottom. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We got there. Let's go. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. <sighs> okay. I did a. I, in fact, I lie. I did do a woodworking project recently. I built some shelving. It's on my Instagram. Um, that you can definitely tell when screws are going in the wrong place because they're very, very hard to move. And that one seems. That one seems okay. But also, it starts yanking it out from the other side. So. Don't magnetize, just screw with you. God, I don't know why they trust me with screws. Okay, come on. We need more leverage, that's what we need. But yeah, very easy to tell, which we found out to our detriment. You know, but that's okay. I mean, it's a project. You're not lifting, you're just not screwing in. Oh God, I need more people for this. Alright, come on, come on, be good for the camera. Now, we just screw those in, yeah? Well, yeah, we just screw those. Well, I can hear the wood biting, certainly. It'd be probably easier with an electric drill, but... <sighs> Who's got time for that? Oh, I'm just going to ruin this before it even begins. No, it seems like... Okay, we're just going to get the screws down further. There we go. More leverage with this one. You definitely hear it biting. There we go. That one's in. What about you? Why are you on the angle? No, we did it. Alright, we're just going to... Hmm. Maybe for the other side we'll just do one screw at a time. I think we made this... A little bit unlevel. Okay, back into your hole, sir. Or madam. Or whatever. Do screws have a gender binary? Binary. Maybe, maybe not. Who can tell? There we go. Okay, so we got those in. And we didn't puncture it through anywhere. So... <laughs> That's a good sign. They're nice and secure. Look at that! It's practically half a loom. <sighs> I need to take a little breather. Oh my god. Alright, that's front rail still, so we'll just put that over there with the heddles until we know what we're doing. These red screwdrivers aren't doing anything for me. It will stick with this, this nice one. Okay, okay, okay. Secure the front rail to the right side with two wood screws. Oh god, really? Why? Ensure the groove on the front rail is facing upward. What does that mean? 
facing upward. Oh, I see. It's, it's, um, instead of being like, you know, vertical, it's horizontal this time. So we've got to have that groove facing up. Okay. This has some dents already. I don't think that was mine doing. Hmm. <laughs> Which is probably why you do this. Like you sand it properly and then you finish it and then you assemble it. And it's just like, well, all right. Good to, good to know for next time. Okay, so we need two more wood screws. By the time I actually get around to weaving something, I'll be just like, I've been through a war. It's going to be exciting. Okay, so front groove facing up. We've got a bit there. So, do you mind? Okay, we'll put one screw through and just go and see if we can wiggle that in. We're going to put the other screw in there as well, just so we can line it up evenly. As even as it's going to get, one hopes. Okay, now we've got the good screwdriver. We're just going to hopefully screw this down very evenly. Mm. As much away as we can. That's going in easier than the other ones. Probably I've got the better screwdriver this time. Yep, that's in good. How are we feeling? Okay, second screw. Come on, come on. You go for mama. Alright, are you in? Are you in? Okay, then. Second screw is always dodgy. Hear the nice uh, screw biting. That's good. That seems good. No gaps. Look at that. All right. So that's basically the right side done, I guess. Right. So secure the front rail to the right side with two wood screws. Ensure the groove is facing upwards. We've done that. Hooray. Oh, thank you for holding my hand in this, guys <laughs> and gals. I really, really need it. <sighs> All right, wax both ends of the rod. Wax? When did it say I needed wax? Is wax included? Do we, do, do we, do we have wax? Wax is not something they bring. Or supply, rather. Am I going to have to go get my candle for this? Wax both ends of the rollers and then place both rollers into the assembled loom side. Which loom side? Is it both? Oh, because there's two rollers. All right, where are the... Actually, what do the rollers look like? <laughs> Is a better question. Back roller. Okay. Then we've got warp stick, but we know what warp stick looks like. Front roller. Okay, so it's the... Uh-huh. 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 Are you in some ways longer or more different? No, you're both... They're both the same. They do have a funny end on this side, which they don't have on this side. Interesting. Which side am I putting it in? Okay, it's the funny side in. Are we still on the right? One gathers. Okay, so it's the funny notch side going in to here. Uh huh. Look, I don't have any wax. I like those candles. I think that's a bit subpar. <sighs> right, so, and we put you in, one gathers, we put you in the same side. This is starting to get a bit unwieldy. We might have to... Oh, I dropped something. That's okay. We'll just pop you down now, because you're starting to get big enough to need it. There we go. Can everyone still see? Excellent. Good, good, good. <sighs> All right, kidnap the instructions. Wax both ends of the rollers and place both rollers into the assembled loom side. Check that the longer roller end is through the right side of the loom. Longer roller end? Does that mean the notch? Because the notch is... Oh yes, of course, because the non-notched end is, is shorter. We can see that pretty clearly. Alright, we're in. We're in. We're good. What do you want from me now? What do you need from me now? Locate both rollers into the left side. And secure the front and back rails with wood screws. Okay, okay, okay. 
So it's starting to come together. Now we've got our lovely side, we've just got to make sure we're lining it up. Oh no, that's perfect. We are lining up right. Okay, so what did you say again? It, it's not like the manual's actually speaking to me, don't worry. <laughs> we're fine. Both rollers. Oh, that's sturdy, that's good. That way when we go to screw it, it'll be a bit more secure, maybe. So it must be that the right-hand side has those poles, those interesting movie things, and the left-hand side doesn't. I suppose because the right-hand side probably has the cocks. So that's the important side, as it were. Well, if you, know, if you need the cogs, I mean, obviously we don't need the cogs. Okay, wood screws. So we need our trusty wood screws again. Probably the last time we need it because we need for this side, for that side. Okay. So, let's get you in. Well, no, nope, stay. It's the problem, they're movable. <laughs> okay, nope. Bad. Bad loom. Right, three wood screws. Now, we don't have to do anything with the washers yet, do we? No, no, we're securing the cogs with washers. Okay, 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 okay. Actually, we'll just pop this back off. And whack in our screws now so we get level. I, I think we did really well on the other side. I'd like to do really well on this side. Okay, we got our horizontal and our vertical bars. <coughs> <coughs> oh, it's killing me. Okay. <coughs> mm, sorry. Just choking to death, mildly. You know, as you do. <laughs> Alright, see. So now we pop them into the holes, encourage them to go in the right places, which is a good thing with many, many things in life. Okay, let's start screwing it in again. Ah, oh, yeah, it's in nice. Haha. Okay. Oh yeah, that bit nicely too. You look all, all good there. Yeah, it's all good there. There's probably just a bit more, probably need to sand this a bit before doing it, but do I care? The answer is no. I care very much about my craft, but sanding, me. I had to do it for the sideboard recently and went out there, outside, music blaring, old pants on just got into it for an hour and a half which was good it ended up very well sanded and painted by the end of it I'm very proud of the sideboard so that's wonderful but it's also it's not my favorite thing to do you gotta do it it's like getting your vaccinations it's important but for this me we'll see if I like my Ashford we'll go from there my other loom thankfully is varnished etc but that was done in the 80s so Long before my time. Okay, come on, straight now. Okay, in nicely. Yeah, that's a good screw. Actually, you could probably need a bit more. I can see you're not quite level. How's that? You? Oh, I'm shaking. There we are. Okay, now. As far as I understand it from now, that's the back of the, the machine. This is the front. Well, machine. Open. It has moving parts. <sighs> we did it, guys. Woo! Okay. Locate both rollers. Secure it. We've done our screws. We're out of wood screws now. We had eight. So, you know, two, 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 two. Place the cogs onto the ends of the rollers. So, we're looking back at the right side of the machine. We need our washers now. Um, what else do we need? Oh. Alright, I think all of you can just sit over there. 
Put one in the wrong box. Right, we need our cogs. Okay. And then we gotta use the metal thread screws, I gather. Which are here, I think. What is that? Do you know what this is? No? Okay. It, it, it should stand over there, man. Okay. Alright. Now, from the picture, I believe these are the cogs in question at present, rather than these ones. I assume they're related, but I think they come up in a... Yeah, they come up in another step. So these, for now, are the cogs that we're talking about. Okay. Now, it says place the cogs onto the ends of the rollers. One presumes it's on the right hand side with the poles. We've got our two poles here. So, yeah, I'll just move it so you guys can see a bit better. How's that? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, and they're vaguely sort of rounded rectangular. So, and that is vaguely rounded rectangular in the center there. So, that fits. Okay, so we'll just. Put it on in such a way that really it freaks me out. Okay. How do you even... There we go. Huh? Okay, okay, let's try the other side. <laughs> I know I put you on correctly. I think the pole's getting in the way a bit. Or maybe just me. Or do you go the other side? Is it wider one side? How do you work? You're supposed to fit. Check the teeth and gauge the poles. Okay, so we've got to use the poles, Luke. So we've got to... Blah, blah, blah. We've got to fit it in such a way that the teeth interact with the teeth of the poles while also fitting onto this thing, which... Seeming a little... Bonkers. At this point in time, let's see if this goes better. Uh huh. Come on. Come on. You can do it. I know you can. Yeah, see, you're. Oh my god. It's like me trying to put jeans on. God. There we go. Okay, so. So, it's interacting with the pole and it's also on. It's just a very tight fit for some reason. And I don't know why. Are you supposed to be moving? Is, is that right? Did I put you in right? Oh my god. Okay. Mm, you do need a bit of a sand. I don't know why they're patchy. I suppose they are so you can sand it to your liking and then varnish it to your liking or wax it. But it's still just like it's frustrating to almost be given, you know, unfinished wood. Which, eh, means you can customise it. And that's an important thing in the fibre artist community, I think. Can I, are you interacting? Are you not interacting? Okay. Oh, oh my god. Aha. Okay. Are you in? No. Yes? No. Oh, sorry. Well, it's interacting. I'm not real sure on the back one if it's on or off, but there does seem to be a bit. More clearance, come on. It's not like there was a back roller and a front roller, to my knowledge. So let's have a look. We'll go back to the instructions and they go, hey, this one's with the front and this one's with the back. It's just like, well. <sighs> you didn't tell me that earlier. No, they just they just says cog. We'll, we'll work on that, um, but for now it's on, and it seemingly is interacting with the thingamajigger. Now, what's the next step? Oh god, okay. Well, it's definitely interacting. It looks like the picture, so yeah, and it's, the poles are still moving. This is a very good sign. Now, what's the next step? Secure with washers and 20 mil screws. So, one gathers, it's these little beauties. Okay. 
I only need one screw, I just gotta put it through the center there. That's why we only have two Boshes, which. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Before I do this, I might try and see if I can get the cogs on a bit better, because I'm not really satisfied with how they've worked out. It's a bit like you're on, but are you, are you fully on? I mean, it's like trying to put jeans on. Are you, are you on or are you about to fall off? It seems pretty on. And I mean, those are as far in as far as they go. I'm a bit suspicious of this one. But I'm gonna do. Ugh. It'll do. We'll just... If we need to, we can make adjustments later. Okay, I think this is the proper screw. Oh, we got to turn you up again, don't we? Okay. Where did I put the good screwdriver? Uh -huh. Now, it is just 20 mil screws. Okay. Let's just double check that we're getting this right. Now, we've gone through our wood screws. Metal thread screws, rounded screws. Oh yeah, we used up the rounded screws earlier on the poles. So the only ones left by process of elimination are these ones. So yeah, we're fine. We're fine. Just we wouldn't want to get to the end of the project and go, hey, you used the wrong screws. <laughs> that would be bad. Okay, so we put the washer on first. Yeah. I don't do things like that. Yeah, it's definitely washer on first. Good. Good, 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 good. And then secure. Do we secure tightly or just... What do we do here? I don't know. I just hit myself in the face with a screwdriver for a bit more. <sighs> Suicide leap. You'll never take me alive! Well, I'm sorry to say dude, but frankly, you're one screw. So. Are you sure it's supposed to be this difficult? I swear I thought the other screws were hard. No, sir. Okay. Now, are you gonna go in straight? My dude, why are you leaning? Righty tidy lefty loosey. Let's reevaluate, sir. Well, oh, there's the hole. You're supposed to go in it. You know? Okay, we've got it secure in the hole. We put the washer down. supposed to be screwing in. Oh, there we go. It just needed a bit of persuasion. It really needs some persuasion. Do you need a different screwdriver, maybe? Alright, let's try one of the others. That's even worse. Okay. <laughs> Back to the trusty one. Hmm. Is this oh. oh my god. Okay. Let's try the lily. See if that nope, that does nothing. I'm not covered in dust. We need a larger screwdriver. Is this the way you're going to be, sir? Irritating me by having to get up and go get another screwdriver. Let's try this one. I don't know what the problem is, really. Do we need a bigger screwdriver? Do we need a... Uh, go in, straight. Hmm. 
Do I need a bigger one or a smaller one? I think I need a bigger one. Oh, come here. Alright, I could not find a bigger screwdriver, so we might just have to muscle through this one. I'll stand. Alright. Well, this is coming together much better than I thought. No, we cannot muscle through this. Okay. <sighs> Try one of these again. Ooh. No, that's not going to work. I need a bigger rounded screwdriver. I can't find one. It definitely doesn't say when you buy this that you need a full woodworking shed, does it? <sighs> okay, well, we'll just ignore that for a minute. I know the next step is to put the cog cases on, but we might have to do that a little later. I need to go find a... I need to go on an epic quest for another screwdriver. <sighs> That's difficult. Okay, so the next step is to locate... Whoops. Well, you see the four holes in these have pins so here you go and then you hit it with something so it stays on it's like well i think at this point of the project you will feel very justified in whacking something very hard so that sounds about right but you need to hit it with the palm of your hand or a rubber hammer so it doesn't one damage anything and two actually goes in okay oh these actually come in handy later in another step apparently so You put them into the small hole in the roller and out the larger hole in the roller. It's like, oh, well, I didn't know you did that. Okay, cool. And then you can connect the front and back warp sticks, which are these little babies with the uh, arrowhead what's it, and secure them. Okay, cool. That's good to know. And there's a whole diagram, like, of how you put the arrowhead sticks in. So that's good to know. All right, um, I can't go any further till I find a bigger screwdriver, so. <sighs> it's irritating, what's the next step? Oh, assemble the clamps. I suppose by that point, really, after we do the cogs and then the warping sticks, I suppose it's basically together because the next page is just it together. <laughs> so that's awesome. I suppose um, you put the reed in here somewhere, I think. Look, I don't know very much about this, but that's okay too. I mean, it's just a thing. All right. I guess here it gives a description of um, the particular reed that I've got, the one on top over there. Is I said it was a 7.5, and it seems... The reed with this loom sets the warp threads at 30 threads to each 10 centimeter section of reed, or 7.5 threads per one inch, which is 2.5 centimeters metric. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay. You've got a warping peg. Intriguing. Okay. Does the clamp go for the warping peg? Is that. Is that how this works? All right, I will be back in a minute. I'm going to go on an epic quest for a bigger screwdriver again and actually find one this time. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we got it done. I had to on this dad and his electric drill, but look, they're in. They were just being stubborn about it, which, eh. But it's still movable, so I think it should be... Oh, look, there we go. You had a clicky-boo. That's good. Does the other side do the same? Yes! All right, we're going to take that sound as a very good sign. All right, we can do the last of it now. We've got the cog... What do they call them? They call them handles. I was going to call them cog covers. I don't know. Cog covers sounds good, because that's a cog, and this is a cover. I mean, I suppose it is a handle, too. That's how you... So now it says locate the four pins in the handles with the holes. So if you just line them up and then you give them a whack and that's all good. Oh yeah, that. 
Oh my god, okay. <laughs> we might have to get the rubber hammer for those ones. Yeah, I'll get the rubber hammer later. <laughs> I need a bit more of persuasion, I think. Which is fine. Okay, so essentially those are in. I'll just give them a whack later off camera. Yeah, those need the rubber hammer. Let's not damage this. Okay, next point. So we've done them. Essentially, they will be done. Let's not to worry. Yeah. How's this side looking? Did we, did we bang it up terribly? No, no, that's looking good. Okay, is that the front? Yeah, that's the front. Okay, so let's turn this around. Okay, so we got the back. We got the front. It's looking good. That seems to be a nice thing. There's a bit more of a gap there, I don't know why. What are you doing? Hmm, intriguing nonetheless. Okay. Now that's looking good, the screws are in, that's looking fine. Just a bit more of a gap at the back, I wonder why. Hmm. Tinker with it later, it's not a problem. Right, we've got our arrowhead ends. Now, it says... Push the arrowhead ends into the small hole in the roller and out the larger hole, as illustrated. Which, uh, which end of the roller are we looking at? I think it's the back end. Oh, oh clicky, clicky. That's a good sign. It's working. Oh, it only goes one direction, so it rolls this way. Which way did you roll? Oh, you go the opposite way, so it's tightening, so it's going like that, so that must be to help the tension, etc. I don't have the proper terminology yet, we'll work on it. Now, we need our two warp sticks, which are these lovely ones, as I recall. We'll just double check with the diagram. Do you have two holes in you? It's hard to tell, the text is on top. I believe they do. Otherwise, I've got the wrong sticks, don't I? Okay, I think I've got the right sticks. Now, oh, oh, okay, I missed a step. I got confused because that doesn't have the full colour, as it were, the background. So we've gone from step nine, which is our cogs, which I do need to hit with the rubber hammer later. Okay, and then it goes to ten. Connect the front and back sticks to the rollers with the warp tie warp stick ties which are these ones okay so oh oh no no they fell okay so these clearly come off there's clearly three three holes three ties okay that's all good we'll just get them off there cool now does it matter which way it's not the same, but we put, uh, as it were, the nail head top through. Maybe it does matter. No, they're just being stubborn. Okay. To the rollers with the warp tire sticks. Push the arrow head of the nylon tires through the holes in the warp sticks. Okay. Easier said than done. Oh, we got one. Look at that, we got one. <laughs> Alright, they just need a little persuasion then. Like everything in this freaking build. Oh, there we go. I don't know, it looks. Ooh. Good things these aren't sharp. Alright, one warp stick done. Whew. Okay, it really doesn't matter what side it does it. No, okay. Yeah. Right. Fourth tie through. Ooh. Fifth tie through. Ooh. Ah, six one. All right. So now there's three holes in these and three holes in the rollers. So we just. 
But where do they connect up to? Is it... You have the rollers. Do they hang off the back, as it were? Is that what we're doing here? Because that's what it looks like in the diagram. You've got, you've got your warp stick, yes. Then you've got the back roller, and then you've got the back bar thing. What was the back bar thing called? Back rail. There we are. We got there. Okay. Um. Room. Right. So we've we've run these through our warp sticks, as we know. Right. That's fine. Then we've just got to find the smaller hole, apparently. Oh, here we go, here we go. Okay, so you see, those are small holes, and we'll like, ow, 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 that hurts. And then we got the bigger holes. Yes? Yes. They look smaller. They look smaller. Okay. And then we push the red holes through the small holes, through the big ones. Then what do we do? Like, are these secured in any way? Or are they just... Okay, let's give this a go. Oh god, okay. That's really hard to do. Now, it's both, it's both ends that we do, yeah? Well, then... Because I, as I understand with warping a limb, there's quite a bit that's tied onto these, I think. Don't quote me on that, I'm not sure yet. But I think... Okay, so that's hanging. You see, that's bouncing quite merrily. There we go. And that looks that looks similar to that, I think. I think, I think, I think. But how do you stop it falling out, then? Man, I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it, apparently. Alright, now we do the front. There it is, bouncing away in the background. <laughs> okay, and then we just say, whoop, ow. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but that was a very loud sound. Okay, and then we just push the arrowheads through the small holes into the big ones. Small holes, oh, into the big ones. Yeah, the more I build this, there is definitely, if I ever get another Ashford, that I assemble myself, it's definitely a good idea to sit there and unbox it and sand everything and then wax or varnish it. I think that's going to be a very good thing because it is very unfinished. So, note to anyone out there who's debating it, it's probably a very, very good idea. Okay, front end bouncy. Good, okay, so that's our loom, isn't it? What's the next step? Assemble the clamps. Okay. Where did I put the clamps? Is that a question? Oh no, here they are. What's that? Oh, that was scrap from the arrowhead pliers. Okay, good. Right, we've got some long curved metals. We've got a bit of wood. We've got two wash. Oh, not the washers again. Okay, boom. Off your pot. Okay. These really lovely, sturdy plastic bags which I might I might keep for the odds and ends. That's a very good idea I think. Alright, assemble the clamps. Right, so we got we got our L shapes, yeah. Do we unscrew this? Yes, it says it says so in the diagram without words. You take this, this does not look like that. Looks like a very different block of wood. Let's go back. Does it have the clamps? They don't. The blocks of wood aren't sloped as as you would expect in a drawing. Maybe they've changed their design. Okay, so do you put it into the groove bit? As the oh no, I gather the groove bit would go with the thing down the bottom. All right, but then where do you put the washer in? This diagram isn't very specific. Do I need the clamps right now? Ah, here we go. We've got a better view of the clamp, as you might be able to see. And it sort of goes, you thread that through and then you do the washer and then you do the clampy bitty boo. So. 
Okay, let's give that a whirl. Um, all right, so we'll put it through. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put it through. Put yield washer on. Cool. At least I think this is the way it goes. Yeah, the groove goes at the top. It's not very specific at all. All right, one. One thing you've done. Okay. Are you supposed to move like that? I don't know. I'll Google later and I'll see what I'm doing wrong with the clamps. Maybe this end goes into the groovy bit. Hmm. Not 100%. Okay. But thankfully it's modular so it's easy to undo. Just drop the washer. Okay, so we get that up. Hold on. Just screw this. No, come on. Don't embarrass me in front of the camera. There we go. Right, two clamps, one loom. There we are. Okay, the next page, it's run out of instructions, so that's fine. And it just sort of uh, gives a little background on it, which is cool. Which we discussed earlier with the 7.5 watts for the rigid heddle. Where then do you put the heddle in? Because we've got our lovely 7.5 here. And it's got little slots. So where, perchance... Does it slot? I think that's a very valid question to be asked at this point in time. Because you're not really seeing any, you know, protuberances in the middle here that it can just go onto. Alright, let's turn the page because it's got accessories, that's nice. Now it's saying weave a sample it, but it doesn't say how to put the heddle in. It's got a very decorative picture, wherein the heddle's just askew. But it's not saying how you actually put it in. Oh. And I know it goes in the middle somewhere. I mean, that's very obvious. And we've got a very interesting carved design in here, the basis of which I'm not 100% sure. I do believe this model comes so you can have two heddles for even more exciting weaving. So maybe that's a part of it, but bit at a loss, I'll have to have a Google. But, anyways, we will close that up, put that to the side, now where's the back? So there we have it, we've got our loom set up, we screwed it together, we put in our warp, warp bolt? Is it warp bolt? God, I don't know. Got to hit the cogs with the rubber mallet a bit later, but everything screwed together, everything's secure, it did take a bit of work. But that's okay. But there we are. We'll just have to figure out. I'm going to have to Google and get the heddle in. Because it fits somewhere. We'll find out. We'll find out. All right. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you for bearing with me on this. Uh, it's, been, <laughs> it's been quite a morning. Um, but it's been good. And I think the next video I might upload will be me trying to warp this. And then maybe we can try to do some weaving on it. And I think that would be exciting because I'm very much a beginner at this and I'd like to take you along with me and we can explore it together and find out the good bits and the bad bits and the bits that we wish we knew. So yeah. All right. Stay well. I will talk to you soon. All right. Bye. <laughs>